Yeah. So I'm just going to check if that VM relocated. Yes, it did. So what I'm going to do now is, <laughs> back on the thick client, um, demo ESXi1, that VM is actually hosted on there, and we can see it's on the demo data store. Just for checking, I have HA enabled on that data store, and what I'm going to do is use PuTTY, log into demo ESXi1, And I'm going to be mean, and I'm just going to force reboot that host. So that host has gone down hard. So at this moment in time, and I'm going to use the tasks and events here, that host has gone down hard, and that VM is obviously residing on that host. So because the VSAs have identical data on both sides, what we'll see is um, a HA event actually kick off. Uh, I don't know if I can make that any bigger at this time. Okay, so what we can see here that it's, it's actually vSphere has actually detected some connectivity issues on some iSCSI portals, um, and then it's going to actually take the appropriate action as we go through these. And I'm just going to keep it on here for uh, the events to happen. Collectively holding breath for AJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I'm looking for, so we see the, redund the storage redundancy, so we know that we've lost a nice SCSI path because one of the VSAs has also gone down hard, but it restored access by failing over to another path. As we keep going through that, I'm just going to check on the Windows VM shortly. We should see Quick the, question while we're... Please. Um, SVSAN, what is that? mean or come from or anything. magic virtual sun. Storm magic, okay. <laughs> creative. No, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> we spent so long over that. Yeah. <laughs> Paid a fortune for a design agency. <laughs> well, now it's awkward. <laughs> Do you guys have any um, connectivity into like storage providers inside the web client? Um, we are working with, so we spoke about some vendors earlier and the fact that they have their separate storage interfaces and we're working with several already on that as well to actually be associated in there. Um, currently though, VMware, Thick and Web Client and uh, I think in the next few weeks, um, System Center Operations Manager integration um, and then potentials for other parts of that in the future to move in there. Obviously, you guys love your iSCSI with your um, uh, with your history, VVOLs and that kind of support. Yeah, uh, not support yet. Obviously, but this year it doesn't yeah. exist yet. But yeah, yeah, but it's being worked on okay. already. Can talk a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to hazard into forward-looking statements or anything like that. But what are you thinking on replication of volumes from a remote branch to a core? Uh -huh. I, I didn't understand. You said something earlier about working in that direction. What's that going to look so like? So we, we have an asynchronous capability, what we refer to as an asynchronous capability today, uh, that can work on top of the synchronous capability. It's not a release functionality from us. Uh, they, what, we're, what, we're, uh, what we need more time on is how that data is then going to be actually used. So what are you trying to achieve? You're trying to achieve disaster Simple recovery? Namespace would be ideal, I think. That's, this is always the challenge with iSCSI, is it's tied to IQNs that are unique. Um, Thinking ahead, if you could somehow map all your your systems to a single namespace for storage, uh, um, I don't know if that's what, where you're going or not. But I'll be quite honest; that's not my feedback to the CTO. I couldn't answer that one. <laughs> do, you, do you get the uh, the idea, though? If a single namespace for your storage, so right. If you could explain, um, so. If my physical hosts are, are running iSCSI targets and the VMs are, are in your store magic or store magic appliance is uh, an initiator, right? Or is the target, I'm sorry. And your VMs are stored in there and I have a failure at the site or I just want copies of those volumes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So in your data center, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, is that the thinking 
So you, you, you would automatically mount it or it would be available immediately? Yeah. Um, not at this time. I think it would be more of a, a snapshot base back. Um, interesting though, it, again, I think our CTO would have to answer that question okay. directly. Okay, so a um, little bit pushed for time. So what we can see though, that Windows VM has moved over to demo ESXi2, HA did its job, everything is back up and running. Um, so now you would have two options. You would either bring back the original ESX host and it would go, I'm out of sync and yep, auto sync up. Or you would ship another host or do something and deploy a VSA that would then self-replicate. Exactly. Now, in, in the interest of time, because I need, I rebooted that host and it takes about eight minutes for it to come back up for its initialization. What I may do is I actually prepared some videos so I can try and uh, show you the other aspects of that as well. So what I'd like to do, though, is quickly jump to the dashboard view. So as an administrator, something happened, something went wrong, yeah? So if we actually came in here, we could click on the warning list. We see that this VSA is complaining about something. We can see that the, um, the target, we, we know that the mirror is unsynchronized, so we have a problem there. And what it's reporting is that its partner VSA is actually offline and it's gone. So an administrator can see here on an active alert that that's happened and address it to him uh, immediately. So that could be the fact that you walked in at 8 a.m. in the morning and you quickly look at your environments and you go, oh, hey. And that's because, I don't know, the overnight team didn't capture one of the traps or they haven't acted upon it yet. Is there a timestamp on that or is it the web client that's just not showing it to us? Uh, there is a timestamp there. I mean, I see there's that yeah. one, but are, did both events occur at the exact same moment? or do those, those events would be, yeah. So okay. if it's gone down, the mirror's gone on sync. So they happened at an identical time. So, because I need to wait for that one to come back up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to jump to some videos which I prepared to uh, just demonstrate the, um, mainly the VSA recovery. So, just from your point of view, that dashboard, when that VSA comes back up, they'll reconnect, they'll resynchronize the mirrors, um, but it would only be the changes which have happened in that time and space. So, that 20 gig journal drive which we spoke about, it's there to record the metadata changes of any writes which come down whilst they're out of sync. So that would be like block addresses, um, so we only resync that data, okay? So we don't have to do the whole 50 gig, it may be one meg which had happened, yeah? So we'll just do a quick resync. Once that's done, those VSAs go back into an optimum state and the dashboard will reflect that and you'll have captured the other event in your SNMP or within vCenter so you know that something bad happened. And if your VSA has failed, I presume it, in, the, in the UI you would just deploy a new host, deploy a VSA to that and then Almost. add them together. Almost, yeah. So what we actually have, and um, I, was, I did want to do this live, but um, I've got a video because of the timing here. So. What I've done is, on this video, what you can see is there are two VSAs, and I'm fumbling around a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm hard powering off a VSA, and I'm going to delete that VM. Now, yeah. for argument's sake, let's just say that host came up, uh, or it's a new host, rather, yeah. and there's no VSA on it. Yeah. It's purely, purely for the demonstration. Okay, so that VSA is dead in the water, it's gone. Um, we've installed our new ESX host. Okay, so we've put our new ESX host in there. And what we'll do is we'll go up to our management pane again, and we'll go to manage VSAs. Now what we can see here is this VSA is upset. It's lost its friend, wouldn't you be? <laughs> um, and, what, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell him to recover his friend. So using the restore option, we can see that it's got a good checkpoint time of the configuration of the VSA which has been lost. And again, with the wizard, what we do is we simply step through and provide some information just so it can rebuild that VSA. So we're just specifying the vCenter username and password. You got the password wrong. I think I got it wrong. <laughs> and we specify the host that we want to recover this VSA to. In this case, you stood up the VSA at the remote side, or this is actually going to stand up the VSA? I'm sorry? You already stood up the, the VSA on the host that it got deleted from, or you're, this is actually going to install so the VSA? Let's, let's say that host 2 got destroyed for whatever reason. Yeah. You've shipped a new piece of hardware to site. 
you've configured it with ESX, it's similar or more powerful than the original one with the storage, and what we're going to do from the surviving VSA is automatically rebuild that guy that we lost through the initial host failure. Okay? Cool. So we're just checking the underlying storage, which was originally assigned, and we see that the networks are identical. Supply the VSA password as we want it to be, and we click finish. Now that failed message there is nothing to do with the recovery, it's because it's basically timed out trying to connect to that partner, because I did it so quickly, I deleted the VM, and then basically it, the timeout and it goes, hey, I can't talk to that guy anymore, but we're already in the process of actually recovering. That looks a really strict recovery. It's not as though you're putting a VSA in and then trying to import it and mm -hmm. do everything. You just you don't. Yeah. You basically, all the configuration information which is there, you don't have to go through those steps again. Yeah. You just assure that the network's there, the passwords, and then that VSA that is holding that config will rebuild that guy as soon as he comes up, resync, rescan everything, you back up into that optimal state that you were there originally. Store Magic VSA peers share information for configuration Complex, between each yeah. other. Yeah. So on the dashboard view again, what we can see. So will that go and then amend the iSCSI initiators or take the, the old one out and put a new one in if it's a new well, host? Well, it's um, still, so you've only got the portal IPs. So that new VSA, when it's built off, the configuration will have identical IPs and the IQNs will be added into that access control list automatically. So once that VSA is rebuilt, all we have to do is rescan that HBA and it will all log in to both sides. Yeah, but I mean, the host may have a separate IQN because you haven't necessarily changed from the... Yeah, it, oh, sorry, yeah, it would, it would be populated, yeah. So uh, Twitter question, uh, VMware KB article 2002-883, does that still apply? Oh yeah, that one, yeah. <laughs> What is the article? Store Magic Ice because the devices appear with zero size after reboot of VSX server. Does that like occur often? Has that been fixed? Look at the host, so it supports uh, four, it's only yeah, four dot one. one. So, it, sorry, it was after a reboot. I've had fixes still that applied, you know, oh, in 5.5, five, it's like, oh, we need to fix that. So, sorry, after so a reboot, happening? it was appearing zero in size. Yeah. The, I think that's been patched. It was, yeah, I, I, I would hope so. I definitely, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't say it was our issue, but um, of course not. <laughs> so uh, that's why it's so VM. I'm just looking at the mirror, and because that VSA has been rebuilt, what we're doing is you can see that it's resynchronizing there. It's at 17 percent. So the VSAs have recovered, and, and they're basically resynchronizing the mirror. And what we can see from the VSA views from the management, and I'm sure I'm going to jump around a little bit more, and the dashboard, the VSAs are in a warning state at the moment because the mirrors are unsynchronized. Once they're synchronized, go back to normal optimal running and your environment's back up and protected after losing a host. So when I've got like 2,000 sites, mm -hmm. let's say, does it just have 2,000 objects in there? It would or, do, yeah. I guess 4,000 objects, actually. Yeah. It would be in there. So, uh, but does it clump them together in any way? Does yeah. that really come down so, to how you name them? So what you can see is you have those tabs. Uh, so all, obviously, self-explanatory. You've got error, warning, and healthy. So as an admin, you're really going to be interested mainly then first error and then warning. And it will just list all of those VSAs. You can select them. The associated message of why it's in that state is there and you can take the appropriate action. Can you logically group them yeah. by um, continents, yeah. business units, or whatever? Oh, you can, like you can use the filter. So for example, <laughs> if, if uh, remote location 2001 is there, type 2001 in there, as long as your naming convention was there, you'd see those two VSAs. Mm. Okay, so if you had a naming convert, uh, something's in London and you called it GBLON or yep. US, mm -hmm. AUS for something like that, you mm -hmm. could. Okay. Yeah, you just it's type it in and it would just grab this. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of call it, you know, SV SAN at every location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's SV SAN 1, that's SV SAN 2. <laughs> So, I mean, in the interest of time, I sped through the last bits of the demonstration, and that kind of brings me to the end. Uh, is there any questions at this point? Does anybody want to go over anything that we've been through? You have just one licensing model today, is it? Just like as you were talking about the caching option, you know, mm -hmm. that could be something. The, the, the principle of what we try and do is to try and keep everything as simple, simple as possible. Yeah, that's what it's So the product is simple, our license and structure is simple, everything yeah. we, we do, we try and keep as simple as possible. It's a good way of doing it. A small question. Is it possible for it to be, like, for example, you have two hosts, two hosts in the same location, or like three hosts, three hosts, to stretch it? 
to have some kind of... You can do stretch clustering, and we have people doing that. Really, it falls into... So we did... There is actually a white paper where we've done performance over there, and obviously you see it tail off mainly because of latency increasing. Um, we would require a minimum of like a gig bandwidth. That's what we recommend. So as long as you've got that between the sites and you also in VMware, I forget what the numbers are, but latency. over clustering, they have certain latency requirements. So whatever VMware's metro clustering is, yeah. it's similar. Okay. We're not part of that program because that was the next question, but you can do it. Yeah. The, um, so, some, some of our customers actually like to have, the, if they're using a two server configuration, they like to have one server at one end of the building, the other server at the other end of the building. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that is. Room we, we, have, we have campus configurations where people are doing that. That's a really long crossover cable. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> do you have a white paper for the Raspberry Pi witness model? Yeah, it's not that. something we do because everybody that's just runs it. That's an amazing idea, though. Cool. It saves yeah. me having a laptop as a witness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise, I'd have to have a laptop as a witness, you know? Yeah. yeah. And hope it doesn't fail. Pie. It's great. Mm. Yeah. 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 But it, it is something that you can do. Um, Maybe one of us could write one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go. There you go. Blog post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, most of your customers use like the central site as the core, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, can question is, can we create a RAID volume in the VSA when spanning across multiple VMDKs? At the moment, we support RAID software RAID 1, and that's going to expand. So, yeah, you could assign multiple VMDKs uh, to the VSA. It would see it as a JBOD, essentially, and then you just tick them all and go RAID 1 in this case, but that's expanding further. Well, we could go the dynamic disk approach and just have it fail for us, right? Right, right, Microsoft over there? <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft. Um, there were quite a few things that you actually mentioned through the presentation, things you were looking at uh, from read caching to a number of other things. What's the, what's the big thing coming up that you can say? Once, yeah, that you can <laughs> say, you can say what people know about or, or something that you're working on that you think would be uh, exciting and of interest to your customers? Um, I can tell you a little bit about some of the stuff that's actually coming. Uh, I won't go out live on a lot of that at the moment. Um, you know, uh, once this session finishes, I'm quite happy to give you a bit more details uh, in confidence and uh, uh, under embargo. Um, the it's I hate woolly talk, right? Uh, but I have to talk a little bit woolly when we're talking futures. Uh, what we what our approach is is to uh, provide our customers as much independence as possible. So that's independence from hypervisor, that's independence from hardware, uh, and to simplify how we can best manage his data, whether that is remotely or whether that is remotely and back to the center as well. And I've already given some hints on some of the technology that we actually have and some of the questions that you're asking. And that is the direction and the approach that we're actually taking. So I'm sorry that that's a woolly answer. I wouldn't particularly no, like sure. to hear it myself. There's just an opportunity if you had something great to say. It, but mm -hmm. You do have a lot of stuff. Uh, you do have um, cloud. You are thinking about integrating more with, the, with cloud services, AWS? Absolutely, very definitely, yes. You sure? Ha, 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 ha.